Have you ever gotten into a discussion with a non-Christian only to realize that you can't adequately explain your faith from beginning to end? The stories do connect, but you aren't quite sure how. Hi, I'm Julie Forrest, and today I'm going to provide you with information on how these stories do connect to work towards the ending that God has created and planned. Um, as somebody who has grown up in a home of a pastor, this information was hammered into my mind at a very young age. Because of this knowledge was, ham was hammered into my mind, I can clearly state what I believe, which is what I want you to be able to lead with tonight. I have four points that I want to highlight to help you connect to the stories. The first, creation in the entrance of sin. Second, the history of Israel. Third, the entrance of the, the, entrance of the Savior. And the fourth is the second coming. Um, the first, the creation and entrance of sin, um, is God created the Adam and Eve, and he gave them only one limitation, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They were prideful and disobeyed, and, and sin entered the world, bringing death and destruction as a consequence of sin. Sin spread throughout the times of Noah and further into the times of the Tower of Babel. Um, you can see that in the Tower of Noah, or in Noah's story, because um, even though God saved the people, they were still sinners, such as Noah. Immediately after he got off the ark, he got drunk and naked. Um, the Tower of Babel shows that the people wanted to make their names great instead of God's, instead of God's name great. Um, so instead, God made the name of one name great, which is Abraham. Abraham was their father, the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. Um, the nation of Israel was God's Israelites, God's chosen people, continu but they continually disobeyed God and his commandments because they were blinded by their sin. Immediately, immediately after God's mirac God miraculously pulled them out of Egypt, they worshipped a golden calf and fell into idolatry. God restored them through Mosaic Covenant, and they still disobeyed him. This can be seen in other stories in Israel's history, such as King Solomon, who disobeyed every commandment in Israel for an Israelite king, and split the kingdom of God and split the kingdom into two. Um, because of the people were so blinded by their sin, they had to be pulled um, out of their sin. This is when Jesus came. Jesus came to show that God's people um, show, came to show God's people how to live a godly life, to offer Himself as a sacrifice. Um, to save everybody from sin and its consequences. Jesus' death and resurrection also established the kingdom of God on earth. God's people were, are, are called to be stewards of the kingdom, growing and maintaining it until Jesus returns, which leads to the second coming. The creation that we are living in will come to an end, which can be seen in the books of Revelation and the book of Daniel. This um, ending will be in two parts. First, uh, sin will be judged and eradicated. Those who put their faith in Jesus will be founded it, um, blameless and will not be judged. This must be done because God cannot be in the presence of sin in He because he is holy. The second phase of restoration um, is where God can restore creation to the perfect state and it is meant to be in without sin. Once this is accomplished, God's plan for restoration will be complete. Um, this leads me to my conclusion that God is sovereign. God's sovereign plan is clear and the progression of human history. These, bu these events build on one another and they work towards something. They are meant for something greater than giving us pictures to draw in Sunday school. They are meant to point out something greater. It is only when we look at the big picture that we see this. Throughout all of the stories, one, one thing is clear. Everything is for the glory of God. One, um, only a completely sovereign God will be able to orchestrate all of these events in one way that um, he has and that the, way, that the way that he will. Through our stewardship and expectations for the second coming, nothing is, nothing is for our own personal glory. All glory goes to the one with all the power. Thank you for listening.